God's already done in our midst today. Hallelujah. I know it's different today, but this is why we do what we do. We are here because we want the Lord to work in the lives of everyone who enters into the building. The Bible said, The hour cometh and now is when true worshipers will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Our world is riddled with truth churches and spirit churches, but if we don't do both, we're not doing it the right way. I thank God for the working of the Spirit. And I thank God for his word. Amen. Didn't our youth do a tremendous job? This is, um, this is Building Fun Sunday when we bought this church in November and moved in in December of 2017. The church voted that that we would all do pledges and renew them once a year. And so I apologize to our visitors. I know it's a little unique, and we obviously, don't get me wrong, we'll take all your money, but we obviously don't ex expect you to, to be a part of this. We do our best. We do our best to be a word people. And when I think about uh, our journey together in just these last few years, Eight of the youth were involved and, and could be here and wanted to sing today. And three of those eight were part of Longview First Church when we had our first service here on December the 4th of 2017. Those numbers run pretty similar if you go through each department. It's amazing. It's amazing what the Lord's done in just the last few years. It would have happened sooner, but we ran out of room. Do you know there are people right now who are not a part of this church because they couldn't park for three Sundays in a row in our old location? That's the greatest problem in the world, but it, it was a problem. We moved over here with a hundred gazillion parking spaces. And now here we are having to ask our younger people without children to park far off again because we just keep growing into the same old problems. Thank God for that. If you'll allow me to read from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, I'm going to read one verse of scripture, and I, I know it's 10 till 12, and your stomach will be growling in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm going to do a lot less preaching than normal and, 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 and move through what, what I'm tasked to do. But Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. One translation said, don't ever say, why was yesterday better? We would say, I miss the good old days. That translation says, for it's foolish. It's foolish to ask the question. Now don't get me wrong, there's a lot that I miss and wish I could change. I'm not all that excited about the directions of certain aspects of our culture. And our world, not our country, our world. But I'm convinced that the best and brightest for the kingdom of God is always ahead of us. And it's going to be until he comes again. If this is your first service here, I, I would implore you to come back and see us. It's normally way different than it's going to be for the next few minutes. But I'd like to take just a few minutes and talk to us about us. And if you're not part of us, you can eavesdrop and it's okay. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for what He's already done and ask Him to bless us. God, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your blessing. We believe you, Lord. We are so thankful for all that you've already done and what you're about to do. We want to glorify you in all that we do and be more like you when we leave here than we are today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. If you happen to be in our last service, I believe it was November 28th in our old building of uh, 2017. 
you'll remember a couple of things that I'm about to say. The world, the Christian world in America, radically and permanently changed when an experience that had taken place in the Bible since Acts chapter 2 and it existed globally since Acts chapter 2 birthed a reawakening in American Christianity. We don't have time to, to, to rehearse it all, but a powerful thing happened when men and women, children of God in the U.S. realized that what the Lord did in Acts 2 and what the Lord did in Acts 8 and what the Lord did in Acts 10 and what the Lord did in Acts 19, that the Lord was still doing that today. He was still pouring out the gift of the Holy Ghost within people. When that began to, to, to reemerge in our country, it never disappeared from the globe, but we didn't do so well with it here. When that began to, to, to spark a reawakening in our country, it sent fragments and fault lines through entire denominations. It forced everyone to re- come to conclusions to, to look at their Bible through fresh eyes. And one of those people was a high school teacher in central Arkansas named uh, Samuel Calvin McLean. In 1912 after reading the word of the Lord he began to pray God if this is really what I think it is then I want that to happen to me. And in 1912 God filled Samuel McLean with the Holy Ghost. Just a few years after that, this young school teacher was married and he and his wife realized together that what they did for God would last forever and everything else that they did would be wasted. So they started a new life together. They worked hard, they budgeted, they raised money and they saved money. Not to buy a house, they sold a house. Not to enlarge their life, but to change their life. And they gave the rest of their days to traveling by train. Holding originally brush arbor and later tent meetings. And trying to preach the Jesus name and Holy Ghost message. All across the southwestern United States. They went all over Arkansas. They went all over Texas. And they went all over New Mexico. Pertinent to our conversation today, I believe, from what I'm able to gather, I can't prove this, but I believe it was the McLeans who stepped off of a train just a few miles from here in Longview in 1920. He spent a day traveling the town, trying to find a property owner that would consent to him building a brush arbor to preach this Holy Ghost message in the city of Longview. As luck would have it, he met a man named Lewis Brown who happened to have a piece of property on 13th Street between Cotton and Odin Streets. And that was the good part of town back then. And said, you can build a brush arbor there and as long as you want to stay here and preach, it's fine for you to do that. He said, well, I will, Mr. Brown. I'd love it if you and your family would come be in service with us. He said something like, when do services start? He said, well, when can you get here? And so that first service, that first night, it was just him and the Browns. The next night, the Browns brought a visitor with them. Their daughter, their married daughter, Annie Lou Nelms. I don't know how long the brush arbor went for. As a matter of fact, let's post a picture. I forgot we have slides. I don't know how long the brush arbor was erected and how long that they held services, but I do know that under a brush arbor in Longview, Texas, Annie Nelms was the very first one in a spirit-filled service known to have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Longview. It sent shockwaves through her local church and through her family. After a season, let's leave that up for a minute. After a season of revival under the brush arbor, brother and sister McLean moved on to build another brush arbor and start another revival. When they left, this group really wasn't a group. The next Sunday when service rolled around, Annie Nelms brought her kids with her, a neighbor that she had convinced to come, and her mother. She brought an accordion with her that she was learning to play. And she led her neighbor, her children, and her mother in a worship service. She was never a preacher and never claimed to be, so she just led them in a prayer meeting. And then she told them all, I'll see you next Sunday morning. And she did. She never stopped holding meetings under the brush arbor. 
when winter came. Her dad decided that he was going to build her an enclosed church with an earthen floor. We do not have a picture of that, though I am looking earnestly for one. He built an enclosed structure with a wooden floor. She wouldn't let him put a sign up because all he would call it was Annie's church. And every time he called it Annie's church, she would correct him and say, No, 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 Dad. That's Jesus' church. Back and forth they went until she had to find somebody to baptize her dad in Jesus' name. Now listen, here we are 101 years later. Our intention in October of last year was to construct a brush arbor and hold a 100th anniversary celebration of of the revival that brought spirit-filled Pentecostalism to our little corner of the world. And because of COVID, we just uh, couldn't quite make that happen like we intended to do. But I want to tell you, it's important that we understand something. The church never belonged to a man. It never belonged to a woman. It doesn't belong to a pastor. It doesn't belong to you. It all belongs to Him. But everything God does, He does through people. And everything God does, He does for people. And so here we are. Here we are. Decades, over 40 years after Annie's left this world. And we're worshiping today, multiple buildings later. But it's still Annie's church. Annie Nelms, through force of will would seek out ministers to come and hold revivals. First in a brush arbor, and then in that closed earthen floor sanctuary without a heater. That closed earthen floor sanctuary without an air conditioner. She did everything she could to hold a group together. Annie eventually became a soul winner. She eventually became a singer. But her one great gift is that she was full of the Holy Ghost and way too hard-headed to ever quit. It took her a while to find a pastor. Not a year under a brush arbor and then in an earthen floor building, playing an accordion and leading prayer meetings. Not two years. Not five years. Not ten years. That lady held it together through her own force of will for 15 years. People would ask her, Sister Annie, why don't you pastor the church? She said, I'm not a preacher. I'm just a child of God. But don't give up, we're going to find a preacher. And eventually they did. It waited until 1935. There are no more known records until a business meeting in 1938. And in 1938, Annie officially became the secretary of that church. She signed the property over that that her dad had given to her in his will over to the church. And it became uh, its own single institution. This woman, this woman, through the force of prayer, through the force of worship, and because she just wouldn't quit was the only voice of this message in our entire city for 15 years for 15 years and he gave the rest of her life to what we now know as Longview First Church Uh, 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 she was a part of it she was right into the midst of it in 1951 they finally outgrew that earthen floor sanctuary and they built their second building I think we have a picture of it It was a major upgrade. You notice it had stairs. That was a big deal because that meant they weren't standing on the ground anymore. I don't have time to get into that. In 1958, they added a small addition to it so they could could modernize their Sunday school. Many of you can appreciate this. We lost him recently, but in August of 1962... Brother Odell Johnson was elected pastor of this particular church in 1962. We preach all the time about Brother Johnson's miracle there in the 60s. I believe 65 they gave him uh, six months to live. His health was broke. He was never supposed to make it. Wasn't supposed to function again and, and function he did. When I met him he was in his 80s. He lived to be I believe 93 years old and uh, uh, he just never quit. And many of you were in that Easter service where after a stroke where he had been unable to speak for, uh, for I believe uh, uh, was it 7 or 13 years God touched him and gave 
gave him his voice back and he never lost that again. We lost a treasure when the Lord called Brother Johnson home. In 1974, that church that Annie had started, which was still in existence, they had lost her in 1972. But in 1974, that church voted to merge with another work uh, here in Longview, the First United Pentecostal Church at 1901 Alpine Street back then. And, uh, and they moved into uh, uh, and constructed our last building. Do you remember our old building? Let's throw a picture of that up for a second. Now some of you can appreciate this. I was looking around last Sunday morning. I believe it was Brother Ron Privet had to get people to move so we could find a place that our visitors could sit together. I could rattle off 50 some odd names of people who couldn't be here today. If we brought all of our kids and our children's church staff back in here, we'd have seat issues right now. But you'll never understand what it was like in that building. You'll never be able to appreciate what it was like in that building. I remember when we had to start asking families to ride together. So you would take up one parking space instead of three or four. When it wasn't raining, everybody who had a truck that could jump a curve had to park across the street in our, in our lot so we could create parking spaces for members. Power Hour, Children's Church, the great job that, 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 that people pour into our children here, and I thank God for that. Do you know why it was born? I wish I could say it was born out of a love for our children. And we love children, but it wasn't it. It was born because those kids took up seats. And we ran out of seats. I remember asking somebody one time in a special service, I said, can you do me a favor? I said, this is the strangest thing I've ever asked anybody, but if one more family comes in, would you be willing to leave so we have a place to sit them? It's kind of backwards, isn't it? I'm not asking for volunteers to leave. Half of you be gone right now. I'm heading to Chili's. Setting out plastic chairs in the altar every now and then to make room. I've often thought about what it must have been like for Sister Annie's two daughters who were grown then and older and attending that church that, uh, that their mom had brought into creation with the help of the Lord with their sheer force of will. When they moved in 1974, when they merged with another apostolic church that was an offshoot of theirs, when they made the, here she is when she's older, when they made that move, they tell me that her daughters were delighted because they did not see that as forsaking their mother's heritage or their mother's work. They understood the goal is to just keep going and the goal is to just keep growing it really doesn't matter if anybody remembers your name or mine but the work of God has to continue in our city until he comes again it has to be I'm very familiar with the story of Longview First Church starting in April of 2011 when our family came here for our first service as pastor that morning there were 38 sweet people in attendance. I wrote a note that's still in my old Bible. It finally fell apart and I can't preach with it anymore. 38 sweet people. 36 of us uh, went to eat together after service. We used to be a one table church. God's been good to us. We begin to grow and we don't have time to rehearse every mountaintop and, and, and every blessing. But when we made the move here in 2017, it wasn't so our kids could have a gym and we love our kids. And it wasn't, it wasn't so we'd finally have enough Sunday school spaces to do what we need to do. And we love Sunday school. We made the need because, uh, the move because we were faced with two decisions. We can stop growing or we can do something expensive. And I'll never forget the attitude, the mindset, everybody coming out of the woodwork to pick it up and make it happen together. God has been good to us. And now here we are with a building that we're not going to outgrow for some times. But we have outgrown our sanctuary. And we've been talking about that and working hard at it. And uh, the Lord just worked it out to where interest rates are down in the basement after we uh, uh, got a loan when they weren't in the basement. And, uh, you know, we've got a couple of more meetings we got to have. And everybody here will have a chance to have their say. But if all goes well, we'll be moving very, very shortly into our gym. But it won't be a gym anymore. It'll be another sanctuary because we 
we have to create more room. Do you realize that that will be our third sanctuary in three and a half years? God's been good to us. God's been good to us. Now, it's not about the building. It's about the people. A vehicle can never become as important as its passengers or its destination. Never. Samuel McLean built a brush arbor. Mr. Brown built a building. And both of them built brush arbors and buildings for people that they didn't even know. We talked about it in our, in our last, uh, uh, when we voted to buy this one, we talked about what we needed and what we could do and what we had to do if we wanted to keep growing. And we made the statement time and time again, we're about to buy a building for people we don't even know yet. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how much poor our life would be without the people that are in this building right now that we didn't even know in December of 2016? 17. Now I would rather preach than do this today. You know me. I, I make myself preach about giving one time a year because the Bible talks about it so much and I hate talking about it. I, I, I guess because of what's happened with charlatans and television evangelists and abuse. I just uh, uh, I, I, I don't get more uncomfortable any time of the year than I do when I teach or talk about giving and that's not what we're talking about today. But you did vote and so I have to say a few things before we move on. We bought this building in November of 2017 for $775,000. Now there's two kinds of reactions when we say that. Some people's mouth falls open. $775,000. That was my feeling. The next cheapest bid was $1.1 million. But I prayed and they couldn't get finance. There was another bid for $990,000, but I prayed and they couldn't get financed either. They kept calling us to raise ours. I said, I'm not. You're going to be glad we'll pay it before this is over. We understand that, that, that this building will appraise for twice that or more and that it would cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 million to buy the land and build what we got and, and all that good stuff. But we bought a building three years ago for $775,000 that we currently owe $509,000 on. God's been good to us. He's been good to us. If our visitors will plug our ears, I, this, I, I don't the building note is $3,718 a month. Our utilities in our old building were $490 a month. It was 3,500 square feet and paid for. In our new building, which is 21,000 square feet, our utilities run $1,680 a month. It's seven times the size of the old one and costs four times the amount to heat and cool. Our insurance is $573 a month. We don't talk about this much around here. We don't, we don't talk about money. But just so you know, before a light bulb's bought or a paper towel, before a Kleenex is around the altar, before we do anything else at all, that's $6,175 a month. And you voted to do it, so don't look at me. <laughs> we made the decision that Every year about this time, we would give everybody an opportunity. It's not binding. There's no credit check. We don't need your Social Security number or any children as a deposit. But everybody has an opportunity to fill out a pledge card, and, 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 and we, we pay that through the month, and we've moved this to March because many of you, it, it's more convenient for you to do that around tax time, and God bless you. And I'm almost done with that, thank God, because I, I, I hate this. I dread. This is the only Sunday of the year I dread, and I dread it all year long. But I do want to say something I've never said before in detail. When, when we made the commitment to, to make this move, I promised that if this is what the church wanted to do, that my family and I would lead the way. That we would make sure, unless there's a miracle in somebody's life, that nobody outgives us when it comes to the building. That we're not going to ask anybody to do something that we don't lead the way in. We restructured our entire life prepared to take a 33% pay cut if necessary to move out of that old building into this one. 
Not because we needed a bigger building, but because we needed more room for people. We made the commitment then that we've always stood by. It's been true since the day we became pastor. That not one dime will ever be paid to us before all of the church's needs are taken care of. We've kept that. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. When COVID first came around and churches began to have to close and people couldn't meet, so many of you were sweet and reached out to us out of great concern about what that would do to the church's finances. And we told everybody the same thing. If need be, we'll move in a Sunday school room and get rid of our house. But the church is going to be fine. And the church is always going to be fine. Like the rest of you, we tithe. Like the rest of you, we give offerings. We, we do our part. But for the building, utilities, and insurance in 2020, my wife and I, our family, gave $21,558. That's on purpose. That's on purpose. There's never going to come a day that the church votes to do anything that we don't find a way to lead the way in. And there's a reason for that. My wife and children are, other than my relationship with God, the center of my universe. But after that, what the Lord does for the people in this place, this is what my life revolves around. My life revolves around it. When I think about what God's done for us, money can't buy that. And I was watching our youth sing today. Some of those young people, if you knew how different their life is right now than it was in March of last year. It's mind-boggling to me. But God has been so good to us. We could take testimony time and spend the rest of this service talking about God and the blessings. We could pick any one section and begin to walk down it. Brother Clay Walker, my wife has a, has a country music singer, a first cousin named Clay Walker. And he was, he was big back in his day. And I can't say your name without laughing because I just try to merge your faces together every time I say it. You see that row? We'd have had a hard time finding somewhere to put you three years ago. We really would. And you just keep working back. My goodness. My goodness. Think about why we do what we do. Brother, Brother, Brother Jimmy Hogue was kind enough to blow a morning up with me the other day and, and, and talk about air conditioning and stuff, stuff he can do to help us over here. And, and, and you, just start, you just start looking at people. We, we met the Hogue family. I actually met him in a hospital in passing a couple of years ago. But, but we became acquainted with the family during a Brother James Matthew Sr.'s funeral. And we, what a terrible time that was. And it's amazing how much good has come out of that. And we blink twice and there's Karen visiting service. And then there's Karen in the baptistry. And there's Karen receiving the Holy Ghost and Miranda sitting by her today. We baptized them three weeks ago. You just start walking down pews. We miss Eddie Stevenson today, but uh, there's Sister Melody Stevenson sitting in service. And, and, and you start thinking about people that are a vital part of everything that happens around here that we didn't even know when we moved in to this building. You walk back to the back row where Brother Rocha was here before I got here. But the Pageant family, I had never met Brother Pageant when he welded this thing together that holds the speakers up, but I was praying for him to do good work I spend a lot of time under those things it may not be a big deal to you but it's a big deal to me you just start walking around the building I had never met the right family and here they are and God's poured out so many blessings every other row we've got somebody that we didn't know and somebody that we didn't have room for my youngest child received the Holy Ghost in that old building I think about it every time I drive through there by the way we sold it to another Jesus named church a predominantly black church and we're so thankful for what's happening in their life they're about to build by the land behind it so they can begin to expand and we're rejoicing with them and the growth of the kingdom When they, when they outgrew the old facility on 13th Street, they stole it to a Jesus name work and then they moved over to Alpine Road. As far as I know, everywhere we've ever held church is still occupied by a church that baptizes in Jesus name and believes in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. 
That's the way it's supposed to be. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. So here's the deal. What we do, we don't do to grow a larger church. We do to grow a larger kingdom. This is the only thing that I've ever done that will outlast me. Not what I do in this building, but what I do for the kingdom of God. I don't know where Annie Nam's grave is. I'm trying to find out. I don't know that she died with a dollar in her pocket I doubt her great grandchildren could tell you where she lived but we are standing in her legacy something that she did with her prayer life something that she did with her worship and through the sheer tenacity of her will everything else we do is wasted God blessed us uh, 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 with a home. We sold ours for way more than it was worth and bought one for way less than it was worth. And I live in a house that I couldn't afford if it wasn't a miracle from God. But nobody's going to remember when I lived, where I lived two days after my funeral. What God does in this place, it'll echo through the halls of eternity. We have to have our mind on His business all of the time. So it's 1216, and we don't even get a sermon today. Last Sunday of this month, I might preach two of them just to make it up to you. I don't want anybody feeling hard done by. (laughs) Two really short ones. I know what you want. But I wonder right now, where are rushers at? Nick Hitz received the Holy Ghost in the old building. There, there, there's no pressure you, you know if there are visitors God bless you I, I, we don't want to put any pressure on you at all at all at all at all but but can we just pass those out to everybody else I've never filled one out my pledge every time is whatever we're short that month <laughs> amen it's amazing it's amazing what happens to our lives when we get involved in the business of the kingdom of God We're never going to get to a place where we stand up here and talk about money once a month. We're not going to get to the place where we have emergency building fund meetings. We're not going to get to the place where we do what we're doing today and take time that should be turned one way to turn it another. But we do still want the building to be here when we come back next month. Amen. Lord bless you. I think next year I'm going to give another offer and have somebody else come in and do this stuff so I can talk about something else. Hallelujah. Oh, Brother Privet, give them two of them. They're loaded, man. No. no. <laughs> Amen. I'm just looking around thinking about people right now. We had never heard of Brother Jeff Coles and in he walked. His first service here, Brother Matt was determined to introduce him to me. We had just baptized somebody. And I was in that room. It needed a lock. (laughs) Trying to change out of my baptism clothes back into something else. And Brother Matt started trying to open the door. We had a wrestling match. He didn't know it. Next baptism we had was Brother Jeff. He climbed right in. Would you do me a favor while we're doing this? We can multitask. We do Bible study once a week at, at Brother Jeff's house with him and his mom and, uh, and the Bensons. Would you help me pray for his mom, Ruth, that the Lord would work in her? She needs a miracle in her body. Can we do that right now? Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for all your goodness. You are a miracle-working God, and we've watched you work miracle after miracle. People in this building right now who you healed in a moment of cancer. People in this building right now who you healed of heart defects people in this building right now who had surgeries canceled because you worked a miracle in them one this very week we thank you God for all of your goodness for all of your mercy we pray that you touch Miss Ruth right now that you let your healing virtue flow through her body and Lord as we work our way through Bible study that you would open her eyes and her heart to your word that we would see her in this building Lord that you'd fill her with your spirit that she'd be baptized in your 
your name. We thank you for it, Lord, and rejoice over it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm looking around, one, two, three, people who've been baptized in the last 90 days. God's been doing things in our midst. He is doing things in our midst. So here's what we're going to do. We're not going to put pressure on anybody. We're not going to hold your kids hostage. We don't want to keep them when you leave. We, we might give you a few more. Why don't we do this? And if you need to take it home and, and, and get your wife's permission and pray about it and all that stuff, that's, we understand that too. I promise you, Sister Veronica will take your money next week or the week after. Why don't we do this? As we leave, if our ushers will remain there, we can just we can drop those in an offering basket. You guys got baskets back? Yeah, we can, we can do that as we go. But right now, let's stand together. Somewhere, we don't sanctify people. We don't ever give people credit for what God does. But somewhere in this room, we, in this building, we need a picture and a monument for, for Sister Annie Nails. I haven't met her and won't know her until I get to heaven. But what she did for the Lord changed my life years after she was gone. Judgment Day will be fascinating when princes and kings and presidents and celebrities tremble before the great white throne of judgment. And anonymous people who we would never notice on the street can with glee rejoice as they enter into the presence of the Lord. Somewhere we're going we're gonna to put up a plaque, we're going to do something so that every time we pray, matter of fact it needs to be in the prayer room, as soon as we quit growing and figure out which room's the permanent prayer room. <laughs> Newsflash, this one's next. But <laughs> when we pray, we need to remember that one person, one person who never received higher education, who never owned a business, one person who never stepped foot on a Bible college campus, one person who never preached a conference or an event or at all as far as I know. That one person who's willing to make God's kingdom the priority of their life can change the world for a world of people. We are a blessed, blessed people. In an age of insanity, I thank God that I get to be a part of a spirit-filled holiness, evangelistic, thriving local church body. I'm thankful that I get to raise my children in it. That they're around young people who I don't have to fear might corrupt them. And we've had some of those. Thank God we've prayed them through. Some have to pray through every now and then again and again and again. But I thank God for that. I thank God for that. That it's not an accessory to our lives, it's, 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 it's the epicenter. We're going to be dead a long time. In the meantime, we just want to make Jesus happy. I lay my head down at night with no fear of time or eternity. I get fussed at every now and then for my wife because what should go into my retirement goes into this building. I'm not worried about that. Jesus has a plan for that too. What happens in this place Did you know every oneness Pentecostal church in our town Traces back pretty easily To that Brush Arbor meeting That had one convert Don't ever feel like you've wasted your life If the only person you save is one of your children Who can tell? Who can tell? Who can tell what's going to happen in the larger kingdom? Do you hear me? Our focus has to be on the eternal. If your hope's in this present or the last one, you're either miserable now or you're going to be soon. If your hope's tied to the economy, God bless you. If your hope's tied to the country, 
I honor everybody here who sacrificed for it. I consider myself a patriot, but our country is as temporary as any other. Everything that we don't do for the eternal glory of the kingdom of God is an absolute and utter waste. This is the most important thing I've ever done with my life because I'm doing it for Him. And if you're doing it for Him, it's the most important thing that you're ever going to do in your life. So take heart today if you don't feel like you're getting it done on a grand scale. You don't have to be here. Him, you don't have to be her. You can just be a sister Annie who's hard headed enough to decide if nobody else is in Sunday school, my kids are going to be. And if nobody else is worshiping, I'm going to be. And if nobody else is praying, I'm going to be. Because God can take the efforts of one soft hearted, hard headed child of God and turn a family and turn a city and turn a world. That's what He does. Let's ask Him to bless us right now. Oh Lord, I love you. I thank you, God, for allowing me to be a part of your your people we thank you God for your goodness and your mercy we thank you Lord for all the blessings you shower down upon us time after time after time after time after time we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you just work mightily in our midst Lord that you go with us from this place with our families with our friends we pray God that you'd help us to recognize the opportunities before us to be a service to you and to your higher cause that we can become more like you every day that we live that we can be more pleasing unto you next week than we were last week in Jesus name amen 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 Lord bless you again thank you to our visitors you need to come check us out again this is an abnormal Sunday amen you're dismissed Lord bless